Hi guys! In today's video, I'm going to be decorating my porch for spring and I'm also going to be making a wreath for the door, a spring wreath. My name is Marlene and welcome to my home and garden channel. This video today is a part of an open collaboration with Anna from the Grace DIY channel and a few other ladies. Anna is celebrating a milestone and we're celebrating with her, so I'll link her channel below as well as the other ladies, so I hope you'll get a chance to check them out. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get my porch decorated for spring. So guys, this is the blank slate that we're working with here. I took my Easter wreath down and as you can see, I have a plant on there. Um, it still hasn't woken up from over the winter, so I'm going to put it elsewhere until it comes back up. And then next thing that I had to do was to go ahead and give everything a good clean, you know, wipe down the door, um, you know, go ahead and wipe off the trimmings and all of that. And then we also, you know, had to get the driveway power washed. My son did a pretty good job of that. You can see him doing it there. Um, and if you look from left to right, you will see the difference you know, that the left side is the side that's cleaner. Just so you can see how it, you know, effective it is. And if you look on the right, you see that, you know, that's the side that's messy from the winter. So let's go into the wreath making now, guys. So these are the items that you will need. The first thing, of course, is the grapevine wreath. And this one is actually pretty wide. It's actually um, 18 inches. And I'll put a link in the description where you can get that online. It's really a good investment. You know, just use it over and over again. As long as you don't glue your stuff on, you can use it again. And then the next thing is the floral wire, which I got from the dollar store. And I'm going to be using that in my bow making. And then these shears right here, I'm going to be using those for the floral wire as well as to snip off the flowers. And my scissors is going to be to cut the ribbon. And this ribbon here is actually nine feet long. And that's what I'm going to be using. And I'll go through a step by step showing you how I'm going to make that. And these are the flowers right here. These also came from the dollar store. I have lilies, iris and carnations. I'm going to snip them off to that length right there and, you know, have them stuck in the grapevine wreath and we'll go through that process as well and so let's go ahead now and get started and I'm going to be showing you how I use the ribbon to make the bow so first I'm taking the wrapper off as you can see there and what I like about this ribbon is that it has a little wiring um, you know on the edges so that helps it to stay firm but it's still you know it's still easy to work with so first thing I'm going to do is to leave a little bit of length down as to where I want one end of the ribbon to be and just fold the loop and pinch it in and of course you can make your loops larger depending on how big you want your bow to be and then you just go ahead and pinch the next end and just make sure you keep you know the ribbon in control so it's easier for you to work it and then I pinch the second one and you just want to match them on each side, make sure that, you know, what's happening on the one side is happening on the other one. And just fluff it out as you go along, so that way, you know, it doesn't get out of control. And I'm doing a third set of loops here. And that, I think, is sufficient for what I'm trying to do. Of course, you can do less or more. It just depends on, you know, what you want your final bow to look like. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, cut the ribbon off. But before I do, let me go ahead and get the floral wire and just wrap it around there. And some people, they use tie wraps. It just depends on what you're more comfortable with. I just prefer the, um, the wire because it works a lot easier for me. You know, it's more workable and then it's also easy for me to attach. So I'm going to go ahead and get the ribbon cut now. And sometimes I'll do like a fishtail cut at the end, but because this is burlap, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it slant. And that way I think it will hold up better over time. So there it is guys, you know, and I'll just fluff it out. And here's a finished product of what it looks like. You can see the bow right there. I think it came out pretty nice. And these are the flowers going around there. And guys, if you've made it this far in the video and you love flowers, whether the fresh ones in your garden or decorating with your silk flowers, I do hope that you'll hit the subscribe button and tap on the notification bell so you can get all of my notifications as far as videos that I've made or upcoming videos. You know, it works for both. 
So be sure to do that, guys. And now it's time for the reveal. So here you'll see that it's on the door now. And that's the welcome sign that I have on there that my son actually printed out for me. And I just firmed it up and, you know, had it in the center there. So you can see the flowers that they look real pretty on there. Very spring-like, I think. And now let's take a look at the flowers. So first we have my fern, and believe it or not guys, this fern actually just grew accidentally. We call them volunteer plants, you know, it just grew in the backyard. And I put it in a pot and it's been coming back every single year. And over here is my dianthus. And this is what it's going to look like. You've probably seen this if you watch my last video to see it in full bloom here. So that's what it's going to become. And so we'll just wait patiently for that to happen and just give it time, you know, to come into itself. And I found this really nice garden stake. It's actually a dragonfly. And I thought the colors looked very spring-like and I thought it fit firmly well in here. So I said, let me go ahead and give it a try. And I think it worked out pretty nicely. And down here, these are called million bells. They're kind of like miniature petunias. As you can see, they're multicolored. This was a gift from my wonderful neighbor. She's so kind to me and it came in just in time with all those lovely spring colors in it I'm probably gonna divide it to you know to get two out of one once it gets a little bit bigger and over here I have my croton it also reminds me of the tropics um, this actually overwintered inside the house I do that every year it's getting a little bit large for the container that it's in though it's actually in a pot and I put it in this planter here so I'm gonna do a future video that's showing you how you can repot your plants when they're getting too large for their containers. And over here is one of the petite roses. Um, and this one, it's about to start blooming. There's some tiny little buds um, that are coming up on there too. And these actually love sunshine. So once it hardens off a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and put it where it can get some more sunlight so it can be at its best. Because as you know, they say roses love sunshine. So I'm gonna have to get that done for sure. And then down here, I got some of my dianthus from my flower bed and I put it in my watering can because I thought it looked so cute. And then behind it, I have some salvia there. I'm gonna get those and put them in a vase and make a nice little arrangement um, for inside my kitchen. I'm gonna put it right over by the window. So, you know, you can always use your watering can and put different um, things in there. And so guys, I really hope that this inspired you to get your front porch decorated for spring i hope that you know you got some really good ideas here i thank you so much for watching and to all my subscribers who keep coming back thank you so much i truly appreciate it i do hope that you will have a wonderful day and i wish you a happy spring season